I like that he doesn't jump down for the loot. This time he walks through furious. Oh my gosh. Hey, what's up, Fortnite fam? It's your favorite Fortnite commentator, Monster Deface. And today, we are back with another Fortnite battle royale video in today's video we'll take a look at miro this is my boy right here man if you haven't checked out the last video go ahead and do that because we had a very special interview with miro at the start talking about what it is that he was looking to do and how he was looking to change his play style and just improve as a professional player and his history on the fortnite scene with that before we jump into this review right here don't forget to of course subscribe to this fortnite video if you're new around here because we love to watch fortnite competitive and cover the news content in today's video, we are taking a look at game number two. It's a monster morning. We're kicking off the week right by dropping the 11 bomb from the kid himself. Went absolutely insane on the lobby. This is something we're going to have to react to and check out. All right, Fortnite fam, here we have it. Mira who lands dirty docks. It's been quite the interesting week of FNCS. NA East really turned up. I feel like I called them out on Twitter as being one of the weaker regions in comparison to EU. And then all of a sudden, they just turned on the gas pedal, man. Been loving what we're seeing out of NA East. The storylines have been insane. The clutches are real. But here's the battle map. This time around, Miro's going to be swinging around the, what's that, southern side of the Dirty Dock towards the old grotto where that would be, then cutting up through the lake house here. Before then heading straight into the new zone, kind of swinging back and forth here. Nothing fancy on the rotate, but remember, he is going to go absolutely off in the terms or in the form of popping his frags here. I'm going to go ahead and jump into his perspective now so we don't miss out too much on where he lands and how it is that he plays out. He is landing, let's go ahead and take a look here, at one of the more centralized locations. He does have some company here. It's this strept off in the distance there at the warehouse nearby. And something to think about is that there is a guy that lands at the counter spot. I call this the counter drop because this is a great spot to land on. If you manage to get the perfect two chests and an AR fast enough, you can literally catch a ping out the sky. Just something to think about when it comes down to playing this drop spot, playing these drop spots that are low, right? Low into the elevation. This is one of them. Today's mug of the day. Don't worry, guys. We're not going to forget. It is... We're back to Naruto mug, man. One of my more favorite mugs to use here mm -hmm. are you more of like a hidden leaf kind of guy or what village you in my dude <laughs> either way that's a question for the nerds out there those anime fans it's been real man it's been crazy it's been a lot of fun this uh fortnite season is really kicking off the qualifiers are now over players are now pushing themselves into the heat and this is their opportunities to try and play through the heats, right? Qualify up for grand finals. Let's not forget, if you made it this far, you could have came last place and still secured $200. So, there's a lot of money up in the air. Just for the qualifying weeks, there was four days, Saturday, Sunday, and Saturday and Sunday, last two weeks. And each of those four days, if you made it to round three, you got paid. Obviously, first place won a few thousand dollars, which is sick. But still, making it all the way through just to qualify, it's a couple hundred bucks, so not too bad for a good days of Fortnite, something to get your grinding, get your practice on. Dudes, I want to give a shout out to everyone that's been watching the videos and hitting me up on Twitter, sharing your progress. Yo, y'all don't front. I'll be trying to get back to you guys. I'm trying to show y'all some love. Thank you guys for dropping all the support on Discord. Thank you guys for dropping all the support on Twitter. But what I wanted to say was congratulations. I saw, I think one or two of our people that watch our content actually qualified for heats day three or round three heck yeah and hold up we got a little bit of a fight here it's up against a1 king okay so miro is gonna swing around the back side of this base here finds the player on the come up king shoots first though all right so king shoots first he had to drop on him he saw now i'm watching from the side angle here to see how it plays out miro trying to go and ramp around for height king's actually gonna make a mistake there he defaults off a of height he does one of those little phase sway, try to jump around and, you know what I mean, block height. But then he doesn't do anything with it. And because of that, he drops down. How much mass he had? Yeah, he really didn't have much. But he has a power loadout. My gosh. Miro, on the other hand, with the tactical shotgun, is not afraid to take this fight. Miro has a confidence like no other. Like right here, for example, getting tagged for 22. He still swaps over to his power weapons, right? Still gets back to his tactical and wins the engagement. He is just a player that's going to try and connect every single time. You see the confidence in the play style. And that should not have been a fight that he won. 
but he was a much more confident much more aggressive much more accurate than the opponent he was facing and for that reason he's gonna win this exchange here options to be had of course i was gonna say you better pick up that harpoon there that's a win in its own now being tagged down and having to like heal back up let's see i was gonna say having to force heal up Miro's at seven points in the competition coming in this is early in the round so he had a decent game one where he picked up a few points not quite where he wants to be though he wants more breaks the crane here to drop the loot down this is really interesting because it's about him mastering his drop and understanding his drop spot that's nice right there great find couple crash pads minis on the dock it's not going to matter though he doesn't need any of this he's just going to keep it rolling so not a fight that he wants to take he's going to take this early game fight as a dub ski for him and that my friends is why he cuts out the back half now down the beach it was because there was a player that other player what's it distrept that had half of the docks to himself already and at that point he figured it'd be a much better idea to back off think about his limited materials and stuff as well this is a great disengage doesn't need to push his luck any more than he already has considering he took the fight what i was saying before the fight popped off was man big congratulations to anyone that qualified or has been seeing improvements noticeable improvements from watching the vods whether it be you just stealing strats you learning strats from different pvp techniques or you just you know finding your confidence in us in the content here i want to say congrats man seriously congrats congrats on making it this far and uh man appreciate you guys sharing your progress with me as you guys may know, I did move, so I do apologize if my setup is not the way it would normally look, right? So even my camera's kind of off right now. This entire uh, stream room, I've been trying to get it all together, man. So finally got the green screen sorted and situated. Got my new camera lens up. It's looking pretty good. The house is coming along great. Got new furniture coming in um, pretty much today, tomorrow, all throughout the week. We have just different appliances and stuff on its way, so... Once the home is fully set up, don't worry, y'all. I'll give you guys the full-on rundown. There's Wilkfan nearby. Okay, Miro, like I said before, doesn't want to push his buttons here. He already has Storm Surge sags if he needed them off of the Elam. And, of course, he's got that point. He's trying to get his loot together and make it through the late game. Cutting up, though, you saw the walls there for the Marauders. You have to be careful when you see those. Obviously, there's a high chance that there's going to be a pack nearby. They're already gone, but just, again, one thing you want to keep notes of and be aware of. Miro now is going to swing over the backside of the mountain, see what he's going to see. Nothing on the back half. Mech hitting Sniper in front of him. Don't think it's worth picking up unless you're going to drop the Harpoon, but even then, I think the Harpoon is way more valuable on its own, considering he can grab stuff down in the waterways here and or just take it into late game to pull back loot towards him. There's the crashing site of the Marauders. What's up, though, fam? What are we eating today? What are we doing? Who's on the workout right now? Who's on the treadmill? Who's watching me in the car? Who's listening in like it's a podcast, man? Love to know what you guys are up to. It's become my daily routine as well to check in with y'all. So I appreciate and love the fact that we're building a nice little community here, man. It's been dope. You guys want to know a fun little fact i'm still learning how to use my sprinkler system i feel like it's set up for dummies and uh or like it, it's set up for rocket science it's not for dummies i've been struggling man trying to get this thing to work i can only get one system on or one sprinkler on at a time so little little life insight with monster everything's peachy over here but now i'm having first world sprinkler problems isn't that isn't that a bit <laughs> All right, here's what we're going to see. Mira pulls out a nice little AR. Nice find. He's going to chuck the flopper across the way. Smart for Mira to do that. Also checks the bush here. Love that he checks the bush there with the harpoon. It's one of the most underrated things about the harpoon is the fact that you can do that. Nice find. Yes. The upgraded flop. I almost feel like he should have continued down the water here with the flop and the harpoon the way he was doing. This is a comment for the chats and all of you guys that watch at home. Would you drop one or one entire harpoon with eight shots left for, or seven shots left for one flopper? Or what if you have taken the gamble a little bit more, went down the water, see if you can find something better? 
Miro kind of dropped the ball here. I'm not going to lie. He's allowing this player to sneak up on him. He saw the builds here. He saw the kind of defensive stance. And he should have known that that player was at that point possibly setting up the cross. And the fact that Miro didn't look back or keep his eye on the guy that was close to him, as well as the guy that's in front of him, is a bit of a problem. It's a little concerning here. Now he's going to get shot from behind. Yes, it's going to be the same dude from before. Lands on top of this metal tractor here and manages to build out of it. I would have much preferred if he would have swapped to Brick here because he needed the extra metal to still cap off. So finding Brick would have been a lot easier later into the game. Small situation here where he can optimize on. Plus, it's very, very, very early in the game to be using your metal. Especially considering it's only going to get harder being that he's on the back half here. I appreciate that he pauses up, though. See? Now he blows, what, 60, 70 metal there? Just to cut out, right? He only wanted to buy time so that he can get away. It wasn't a hard pause. It wasn't a hard kind of situation for him to base up on. I do like the fact that he minimized risk, right? Minimized the risk in the sense that he didn't stay in wood, but he could have done brick there instead of metal. For sure, for sure. Either way, small little thing to think about moving forwards. Miro, one elimination, is going to be looking to find 10 more frags i don't know how he does it i don't know how he does it but he broke the record for na east at least for the qualifying days at the fncs there was not a single person that had that many elims today ladies and gents i got cafe bustelo for my puerto ricans my cubans my hispanics out there some of y'all might know what that bustelo is i accidentally mixed the bustelo because we Obviously, we moved, so everything's, like, looking a little different. Now we have a jar of the other coffee. And I accidentally put a spoon in, but I was like, man, these greens are kind of fine. Like, way more fine than I would normally, you know, like, than the texture of my Caribbean Delight. And then I realized, like, oh, sad, I got the wrong coffee. So, it's half Bustelo, half Caribbean. But I ain't mad. Mmm. I was going to say, so what's happening here? Panda gets the tag onto Miro. Miro's going to heal up. Now Miro's gone through half of his wood, right? He's gone through a fair amount of his wood storage. This might be a fight that you want to potentially finish, right? For the refresher here? Nah, Miro feels like he's just going to vibe, man. Like we said before, the stakes are high. It's early into the competition. He already started off on the right foot in the previous game and this game as well because he's gotten his frag to kick things off. Placement point hasn't even been given out yet. And I think right there, he sees Pander off in the distance. Or per Is that Perur? Who's this? Panur? Oh, per Perur. Okay. How would you guys pronounce that? That's a tough one. Uh, Perur there. Was outside of the brick base, but farming his resources back. Nosh off on the side here. 220 damage above. See, that's what I was talking about. Like, Miro doesn't need this. Nosh might be needing tags here. He's going to get tagged. Jumps inside of a cone. I like it. Definitely want to get your heal on here, right? Before he does his rotate. We've seen players like Zayt get tagged in situations like this and continue to rotate instead of pausing to heal. Because when you pause to heal, you allow players like Nosh to get closer, which is a big danger. But Miro's going to wrap his way around. He's going to make his way down towards the water here. I think he just wants to increase his speed movement. Let's get past it. It's also good for him that there's some trees still blocking the line of sight here. So it's going to work out perfectly to cross now with minimizing the risk. Okay, he doesn't even want to fully cross. He's going to go up. Is he trying to find a spot to refarm his material? This is kind of interesting. You can get a lot of metal here. You can also find some brick if you stood. I guess he felt the need to go up just in case considering there was some old builds and whatnot above. Still, Miro hasn't really looked back much. Once he gets going, he's just been on his way. Now in the zone, a little bit more centralized, being that he used the river. He's in a nice little nook here, but he's packed up. Packed up with a bunch of other enemies. Someone's actually going to try and fend him off here. He's going to throw a few stinkers at him. He's going to be crims from behind as he focuses fire into the base in front of him. Just trying to see if there's anyone inside that metal cattle comb. It doesn't look like there's going to be. That one stinker is going to cost him another five material, though, guys. 
Good question here is, do you jump in the cone when someone just stinkered your box? I'd like to say no. If you're going to do it, you might as well get up top and start gathering info. Right? It's just going to be like that. There it is. Miro does that. If I had to guess why he went AFK for a second there, he's probably staring at the zone and or changing some things in his settings. There's no reason for him to have done that when he could have used those seconds to scout the field like you saw him do immediately afterwards. Another snipe comes in. The snipers are out right now. You have to be so careful. Battle going down on the bridge. It's Furious and Teo here battling it out. Teo's going to fall to Furious. I see who fishy light enough to feed. Guys, I think I want to do who fishy next. I'm probably going to do it on stream today. So if you're watching this, pull up to the Twitch channel, follow and turn on notifications because your boy might be doing them live. All right. I got a meeting at 11 a.m. It's 10, 10, 20 a.m. for me right now. So by the time I'm done with this, I'm going to whip up the edit, slap it up to you guys. Knock the meeting out, probably release the video, then go live on Twitch. It's kind of the game plan for the day. I think we're doing a little two-hour session. Ooh, Punisher gets beamed right now by Mira. Oh, my gosh. I thought Mira was going to jump into the fight on the bridge. But I guess since he came in a little too late and the, f the fight wrapped up, he just kind of paused here. Let's not forget, though, too, that he pulled zone when he was down here. And although he pulled zone, he didn't want to be back here, right? Like in this little ditch where players can rotate in. So he moved forwards, right? He got himself a little more distance, a little more comfortable. Okay. Reminds me of Bizzle. How Bizzle plays for positioning hardcore. Even if it costs him a little bit more material. He'll probably... Look to capitalize up. It's also one of the reasons he doesn't get tagged very often. Bizu somehow, some way, does tend to minimize his engagements and time his rotations perfectly. A lot of which are just early rotates before the congestion starts to happen. So he gets first dibs. Miro's got an idea of how much loot is behind the wall in front of him as well. He's going to pop a mini for one shield. So I think he's looking to inch his way forwards. That one health could be the difference maker. We saw the big pot sitting inside the base of Furious, so I think Miro's thinking, I right, if the zone pulls, he's gonna have to leave this loot. Like he he can't just bring it all with him. And if that happens, that's your opportunity, right? That's your time to strike and get inside. Replays have been really bad lately. You guys see how much of the hiccups are occurring. Nothing I can do about that, of course. Granted, I do have some of my textures up, so you know, it looks nice and pretty. What do we have here? Six seconds left. Nothing but chill on the, on the clock here. Let's zoom in, let's take a look at what players are here as the zone's gonna reveal itself. Okay, it shows off, it's going straight south. Game time. Game time. Yes, Miro's just going to go through the build. See what I said? Now the question is, did Furious grab all that stuff that was there? He's still waiting, though. There's a high chance that there's an enemy still here. Is it going to be Miro versus Furious? Yes, he works his way forwards. Still guarding the loot here. He's waiting. He's trying to say, like, listen, dude. I don't know about you, but this don't look like a good fight to me. I think he's feeling it. I like what Miro does here. Gets up and over. Allows him to see. Into this area. Now trying to inch his way across. Can he actually walk across all of these? Or will he fall through? Good question. That might be one of his best plays though. To sit up top. And work his way forwards. He still wants to know, right? He still wants to know if that loot is for free or not. I wonder why Furious is guarding this so tightly. Like, what are you going to do about it? You just have you have to get to zone eventually, right? Like, you're not even safe here. I think Miro is feeling that same pressure. Like, dang, for real? You're not just going to give it away? All right, fine. Guess it's time to get on out of here. So Miro has to default to not picking up the goods. 
goes outside down the water and crosses through the river bend we know this because the edit that he opened up before the spike all right so you can see that's the window that he opens he comes down here he ends up over here he's in the zone now but it's not perfect Ooh, okay that's that's cool he sees furious leave the base and then he goes back he wants to get to the big pot and all the loot oh gosh dude yes it was worth it it was worth it so he's gonna manage to splash all the way up here question 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 do you take the splashes here for later with the floppers or do you pop the minis in the big pot right like do you pop the mini in the big pot take the splashes or do you use the splashes and then take the big pot and the minis or like just the minis in this situation because you're definitely not dropping the flops dang decisions right there for sure okay uses the crash pad here to cut across a little bit wants to build for safeties he was tagged once before these are his old builds gets his way closer and now he's safe 57 players in the lobby things are getting more and more intense The ring is stacked, man. All right. So this is where it's turn up time. This is pretty much the moment we've been waiting for. How does he do it? How does he pop off? Where does he frag off? This is it right here. This is where things are going to get crazy. Half and half out pretty much favors him. He's trying to break this tree up above. Finally, he gets the bubble for it. He wants to break it so that he can crash pad here, guys. Or right, at least give him the option to do so. Here steps below him. Ooh, good shot, good tag. Okay. I think the initial plan was to, of course, crash pad here, but considering that there's a whole entire wave of builds in front of him and somewhat of a free rotate, he's just gonna go ahead and slide on through. I also notice the zone's pulling back a little bit onto his old mats. He can probably use that for later. Miro's in desperate need for a refresh right now. He only has 21 builds. Like, most of that is metal, too, because he picked up that little bit of metal from before. So not the full refresh that he was looking for, but he's going to need one now. This is probably what's going to start. This is going to start the W key from Miro. Miro finds some old builds here from the enemy he tagged up, but he hit this guy for all his shields. Yes, there it is. Right in front of him. He's trying to crash pad into the box. He's actually going to fail the pad a little bit because of the weird angle. He was below. So now you guys know, do not crash pad into a box if you're on a ramp coming in from underneath. You saw how awkward that can end up for you. Switches over to hard mats. More heals down to four splashes. So he bullied this guy off of the four splashes. Huge. And let's not forget, it was still a profit. It was still a net profit for builds here. He got a couple of extra builds out of this. So big dub right here. Pushing for the loot. And then getting some extra builds. Half and half out goes all the way south. Once again, not directly on him, but not very far. Like... This is really good. This is really, really good. It's going to go and work for him. Okay, now with the crash pads, you have a lot of options. You have some options I would use. So here's what I would do. I would use my first pad early before the builds above me start coming out. Or what he really could have done is he could have just rotated for free. Let's just be honest. If it was Bizzle, Bizzle would have ran this for free. As soon as the zone popped, he probably would have just dipped across and got a lot of this for free. Just, just look at how... It's sitting on a trees. It's sitting on a weird elevation. Like, just this entire build's the way it just looks is perfect for getting a free rotate out of this. Ooh, jump inside the box, though. It's going to work because he tags Bucky for something vicious. Holy. I think we saw this on stream right here where Miro came out and hopped into the box onto Bucky. That's going to be a massive refresh. Puts him at 130 now. Decides to play floppers, not because he wants to, but because he kind of has to. He tries to crash pad out. It's going to cost him a little bit, but that's all right. He lands just in time and has just enough floppers to get back into it. 
now fully in the game here everything he needs the confidence boost must be there two eliminations already fights breaking out left and right and it's being open another crash pet out one thing he did not do guys that you guys need to think about here something that booga does really well is he scouts before he crash pads miro didn't scout once his height and he, he didn't walk out to like make sure he was free at all he just went for it and he had a lot of time there to do it so just letting you guys know but that is something that we see a lot of the pros do and they do well good look back onto the zone though trust i'm pretty sure he has a wall there behind him but the mode is just a little trippy smacked here almost eats the pump shot but miro's on the peppers he's got the good rotate going on him okay lays the smack down onto so doesn't get the conversion but that's all right already three elimination let's see whose life is he gonna change next he's about to hand out the clap boys here we have it okay pander in front oh cohen's panda nice hits it for 98 the crash pad bouncing back now there's someone underneath him okay stacky comes and hops into the box this is something that i still want to talk about what miro's doing is that he's not really scouting for information right now he's kind of sitting in the box playing sound cues and waiting for time to go by instead of gathering information even here like he could be he could have been hopped up into a cone right and then looking out and around and that you see you see a lot of pros do that so this is going to work out for him when players come towards him considering how strong and healthy he is i mean it's, it's just going to work for him right now he's going to connect he's a beast when it comes down to pvp but game awareness situation awareness optimization there's a lot that we like that can be had here right there's a lot of Things that can be kind of worked on that I'm noticing right now. A little bit of a layer change. Okay, I like that. Like the layer change right here. Gets off of that second height pretty much. Now sitting on the side once again. He's going to continue to work his way down in front of the zone. Nice. Rotates. Sees a player in front of him. Getting a little ambitious here. Okay, catches Danny. I like that he doesn't jump down for the loot. This time he walks through Furious. Oh my gosh. That, my friends, is what we call a sweet chin music. Furious gets absolutely bodied to the jaw. Damn. Okay. Now the question. Do you go down for the goods? He already took a look at it. And he went back just in case to see if there was any more there. There isn't. Nothing worth. Six elims now for Miro. Enters his way up another layer. He still hasn't looked up, but it doesn't matter. He's focusing on the players that are below him. He's just working his way down this time. Remember, he has the flopper to play a couple ticks of zone here. That's going to work out beautifully for him. Gives him the, the bit of extra option to kind of maneuver around here. 999 is going to walk into him as well. Well played. Hogman gets the work too. He steps right off. <laughs> Dang, bro. Miro, nine elims already. Oh my gosh, jumps down and gives Bank the work. Jumps down and gives Smack the big Smack shot. One more shot left. Miro, Miro like, honestly should have lost this game right there, bro. But instead, he inches out, builds out. Even with the mats, it didn't matter. He was going for the frags in a low game. Like, and, and he did it. I, li I like what he did here. I do like what he did. He had a couple options. Like, with how much material he had, he could have easily been the guy that just played you know, second height after the refresher or like off of the low ground and not have gotten into the thick of it. But instead, he used his dominant position. And by dominant, I'm just talking the health pool advantage that he had. I'm talking the materials that he had so he can build. He can, right? He can do a little retake and throw a couple cones down. He can block shots incoming. Usually in the end game, those players at the bottom don't have much. They're like all in shambles. And it's kind of what it looked like, right? Like he was just catching players that were like, sub 150 hp and hitting them with some stupid stupidly seriously big shots right the big the big shots were crazy they were like 130 plus so it all plays out in his favor he played that pretty nicely i think in lead up though there was a few moments especially when he had that mid ground when he had that height when he was using those crash pads and the rotates you got to be gathering a little bit more information in those moments guys if you're at home you're trying to like really put yourself in these situations 
I know it gets intense, but you got to, you just got to look around you and make sure you are gathering info. Fortnite is a game of info in the end games. I'm telling you, because the more you know, the better you can do. This time around, it wasn't info. It was instincts for Miro. He fragged off, man. He fragged off. Almost dropped the F-bomb right there, but I held back, all right? Yo, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video today. I'll catch you guys in next. It's your boy, Monster. Don't forget to like this one on the way out the door. Peace.